All right, here is question 16, and we've got a table of compounds. We've got an alcohol here, we've got a carboxyl group, and we've got that. What am I looking for? Which one of the following best estimates the boiling point? So therefore, what should we have? The boiling point of this, which is an ester, it should be below both these two things here because these guys have H bonds. This guy only has dipole-dipole forces. So therefore, we're expecting something to be below, it's gonna be A, because that is a lower boiling point. The general gist of this is, esters have a lower boiling point than the carboxyl or the hydroxyl functional groups. Uh, question 17. The following equation represents um, the reaction between chlorine gas and carbon monoxide gas. We've got this beautiful one here. This is an equilibrium question. Which of the following identifies as changes to the system that took place at one minute and seven minutes? So what happened here and what happened here? Our concentration of these all went down. So our volume was increased here, which is fantastic. We have an initial decrease in all concentrations. So volume must have been increased. Here we have no th nothing here, so temperature was changed. Because there's no sharp change in concentration, we haven't added anything to it, we haven't changed volume, it must be a temperature change. We favoured the backwards reaction. So the backwards reaction is endothermic, so therefore we had to increase temperature to get the endothermic reaction to happen. So therefore, at one minute, we increase temperature. So we can cross off the decrease temperature there, cross off the decrease temperature there. And at this point in time, we increase the volume. So it is gonna be A for question 17. Let's move on to question 18. Um, an experiment was carried out to determine the enthalpy of combustion of propanol. Propanol combusting at that much propanol increased the temperature of water by that. The enthalpy of combustion is closest to what? Okay, so we're going to have Q equals MC delta T because we've got an increase in water. Our mass is going to be 150. Our C is going to be one, um, 4.18. And our temperature change is going to be 22.1 take away 40.6 is 18.5. I'll multiply that by 150, multiply that by 4.18, gives me 11599.5. I'm gonna divide that by 0 0.557 because I need to get it, uh, I need to get the moles of that, don't I? So therefore, I'll find that. So therefore, my moles is gonna be um, mass over molar mass, so therefore it's gonna be 0 0.557 divided by my molar mass of propanol. Propanol is C3H8O, so therefore it's 36 plus eight is 44, plus 16 is 60, so it's that divided by 60. So 0 0.557 divided by 60 gives me 0 0.00928, I'll take this as being um, my number then. So 11599.5 divided by my 0 0.00928 equals that, which is then divided by 1000. And that is gonna give me about um, C, should be my answer. Um, and that is gonna be how I'm getting that. What I did, again, if we go back to it, I've got my Q equals MC delta T, working out my energy that was released from my combustion. I found my moles from there, careful because it's milligrams. Um, and then I divided the two and worked out my delta H there. Question 19, I've got carbon, sorry, nitrogen and dioxide and di that's an equilibrium mixture, let's just go with that. A change was made at T2, and what happened? We got a new equilibrium. This is looking at the rate of the Ford reaction. Okay, so what may have occurred um, here, which of the following describes the change that was made to the initial equilibrium system and the colour change that occurred between T1 and T2. So all I know is that my forward reaction went, started to slowly increase. Now what could have caused that? My forward reaction slowly increasing, it couldn't be an addition of my um, it couldn't be an addition of this because that would sharply increase my forward reaction. It, oh, it's all about temperature. Cool. So if my temperature was 
what's happening? My forward reaction is increasing. If I increase temperature, it's gonna favor the forward reaction if I increase temperature. Increase temp, it's gonna favor the exothermic reaction. That's gonna be, sorry, increase temp is gonna favor the endothermic reaction. So it's a backwards reaction, it's gonna be favored. Alrighty, that doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Yeah, it does actually. If I favor my backwards reaction, I'm going to produce more of my reactants. So therefore the rate of my Ford's reaction should actually increase. So it's gonna be an increase in temperature in my opinion. So if I decrease the temperature, the Ford reaction is gonna be favored, lowering the concentration of my reactants. So it's gonna be A or D. What's gonna happen here, I'm producing more and more brown chemicals, so therefore it should become darkened. So it's gonna be B, in my opinion. Um, it's a bit random in that question, but I think the answer here should be B, because increasing the temperature favors the endothermic reaction, which is favoring my reactants. That means I get more reactants, so my rate of my Ford reaction starts to increase. I get more reactants, so therefore it's gonna get more brown, so therefore B is correct. And that's the answer. And hopefully that gets me to the end of what I've got today, and I'll do the rest of it next time.